All right, what's going on, guys? Lies of P is now out on all consoles and has just gone live on Xbox Game Pass for free. So this means we're going to have a lot of people jumping into this type of game for the first time, as well as veterans of the Souls-like formula. And one thing that that tagline entails is that this game is going to be hard. But in order to address that, the game gives you very complex systems that you can optimize in order to make your playstyle fit the challenges at hand. So what I want to do today is present 10 essential tips that you'll need to know when getting into your journey in Lies of P. Because although the game does a good job at easing the player into the world, the mechanics at play are very deep, and it definitely doesn't explain everything. All footage in this video will be from the first few chapters of the game, so no need to worry about spoilers. And for those of you that are new to the channel, here we cover all things Soulsborne, Souls-like, and from software. So if you want to stay up to date on these games, and enjoy the lore and general discussion, then go ahead and hit that subscribe button, and now let's get into it. When it comes to the combat in Lies of P, the roots of the system are pulled from the Souls franchise, relying on melee combat, a lock-on system, and a dodge and guard in order to avoid damage. But unlike the Souls games, the primary means of avoiding damage in this game is a perfect guard. This can be achieved by pressing the block button immediately before an attack hits you, and will negate all damage done to the player, as well as build up a little bit of stagger on the enemy. Now what the game doesn't teach you is how to nail down the timing. It's going to take a lot of practice to get the hang of, but the trick here is actually to hold down the block button for about half a second. If you simply tap it, you will not achieve that perfect guard. But another reason you want to hold it down slightly is because if you time it wrong, you'll still be holding up your weapon to get a basic guard, which is always better than taking the full force of an attack. But I highly, highly recommend practicing on some fodder enemies and mastering the perfect guard because this will be your number one tool even more so than swinging your weapon. Now another reason you want to master the perfect guard is because in addition to making you take no damage and dealing stagger to your enemy, there's a secret mechanic of weapon breaking. Enemies that wield weapons, mostly the fodder enemies, will glow with a red aura whenever you perfect block them. This means that the enemy's weapon is taking damage and can eventually be broken. This makes them significantly easier to deal with as they'll likely have much shorter range now. You can see this enemy here straight up misses me with their attack when normally it would have hit. Even certain bosses have this as a mechanic in their fight, although expect a boss's weapon to take much longer to break than just a standard puppet. So once again, I cannot recommend mastering the perfect guard nearly enough. Another twist on combat in Lies of P is weapon crafting, allowing you to mix and match the handles and blades of various weapons you find throughout your journey. If you want to put a dagger blade on a great hammer hilt, you can do that. If you want to put a mace head on an axe handle, you can do that as well. One of my favorite combinations was the mace hilt along with the great sword blade, allowing for the fluid moveset of the mace, but with the range and power of the great sword. You will absolutely want to experiment with this feature. The handle that you choose to put on your custom weapon will dictate the moveset, while your blade will contribute to the weight of the weapon and the damage output. Now if you like the moveset of a handle but don't like the scaling that it contributes to your stats, you can use an item called a crank that will change its scaling effects between motivity, technique, and advance. So don't be afraid to experiment because these can all be changed out and are not permanent. But one of the primary things you'll want to consider whenever assembling your weapon are fable arts. These are powerful attacks that are unique to each weapon and can be used to deal big damage or apply special abilities that that weapon has. Do not forget that you have these in your arsenal. They will come in very handy. Fable Arts consume a number of charges of your blue bar at the top beneath your stamina that can be refilled by attacking enemies. They can also be very situational such as with this unique greatsword here that can consume one charge of a Fable Art in order to switch from a greatsword into a glaive. I really can't stress enough how important Fable Arts are. Please do not forget you have these. And also keep these in mind whenever you assemble your weapon. Up next let's talk about the levels. Lies of P has a very strict level design where every level tends to follow the same rules. You will always begin at a stargazer, a checkpoint that you can come back to when you die, and you'll follow a fairly linear path with various offshoots that may lead to secrets. This is a game where you'll want to check every nook and cranny, because it does a fantastic job at hiding really essential rewards that players who don't pay attention can easily miss. And the thing about Lies of P's levels is that you should never get too far from the stargazer. If you ever get the feeling like it's been too long since you had a checkpoint, then it probably is. Chances are you missed a short cut back to the stargazer or there's another one just around the corner. At least for the first half of the game, every level follows these rules. Another thing you'll want to keep in mind when navigating Lies of P's levels is to keep an eye out for mini bosses, enemies that are much tougher than the common fodder but don't have a name and a large health bar at the bottom of the screen. Although your instinct may be to run away or run past them, do not forget about these guys. They tend to drop extremely valuable items and can even have amulets or upgrade materials that are oftentimes much better than what you've gotten up to that 
that point. Now, like we talked about in the last point, many bosses tend to be by shortcuts or stargazers. So if you're scared you're gonna die to one of these guys, go find your next checkpoint first and then come back. But as I mentioned, do not forget about them. One item that many bosses commonly guard is Quartz, one of the most valuable things you can find in the entire game. And after defeating the third boss, the Scrapped Watchman, you'll gain access to a mechanic called the P-Organ, which is essentially a skill tree of upgrades for your character. And Quartz is the currency used to buy these upgrades. These are incredibly important, and you absolutely cannot forget to do this. In order to actually get these upgrades, you'll go to the skill you want to unlock. In my case, I pick the Link Dodge, and you'll then purchase two sub-upgrades with Quartz before that skill becomes unlocked. Take careful consideration when choosing these because Quartz is extremely rare and these upgrades play a massive role in how you build your character. But the worst thing you can do is forget to spend your Quartz and not get these upgrades because you will desperately need them. Whenever you come across a boss in Lies of P and defeat it, you'll be rewarded with a special Ergo. These are named in reference to the boss they drop from and can be found in the rare Ergo slot. Now whatever you do, do not use these in order to gain Ergo points. A little bit further in the game, you'll come across an NPC named Alidoro. Alidoro is a vendor for rare Ergo and can reward you with extremely powerful items, special weapons and amulets that can only be acquired through him. Trust me, you will not want to miss out on this, so do not use your special Ergo go before you talk to him. They really don't drop enough to warrant missing out on these items. One major gameplay mechanic that is going to influence the outcome of your ending is your humanity. And one thing that affects your humanity is the gramophone. Here you can play music that you've acquired throughout your journey, and aside from just being really good, the music affects your character. Whenever you finish listening to a song for the first time, you'll get a message that says, your springs are reacting. And depending on which choice you want to make to remain more of a puppet or become a real boy, you won't want to forget about the music. Now you do actually have to listen to the full song in order to gain the effect, but you can step away and go about your other business throughout the hotel. You just can't travel from the Stargazer before the song ends. Now currently all the songs I've collected have been really good, so they're a very nice listen anyway. And for the final thing we need to talk about today, it is one of the most important mechanics, lying. Your lies affect the story of the game substantially, going so far as to dictate which ending you get. You'll also be presented with the option to lie during many quest lines, and your choice will change what rewards you get, or even the fates of some characters. And trust me, sometimes lying is the best option, but what may be best for some characters might not be the best for your ending. So really pay attention to the choices you have throughout the game, and have a picture of your morality here, whether you think you want to be truthful or be a liar. But those are 10 things you need to know when starting your journey in Lies of P. This is a very unique Souls-like game, one that I think we are going to remember for a long time. But if you're someone that's already playing Lies of P, let me know what you think about the game. Personally, I'm having an absolute blast with it, but I'm curious to hear y'all's thoughts down in the comments section below. Either way though, if you enjoyed today's video, be sure to leave a like on it and subscribe if you're new around here. And with all that, I will catch you in the next one.